We've looked at how we can run the standard pre-designed reports as well as those that are pre-designed in the report designer. And they're great reports. However, there might be times that you want to take that base report and customize it to make it your own and not have to recreate the wheel because most everything is there. So no problem. You've got the full power of Excel to edit and analyze reports and numbers, but you need to make sure that you accomplish it in the right process. Reports designed with pivot tables allow for easy customization by adding in columns or doing other things, and we're going to look at how you might modify some of these. To modify a report, you must copy the pre-designed report and link the changes. So here we have an example of our sales master. And let's, let's make some changes to that so we can see how easy it is to use a base report and customize it to our own. Now remember, in order to make changes to a pre-designed report, we must first copy it because we cannot modify those pre-designed reports. Now you also have the option of setting up additional ways that you might organize reports by setting up a folder. It's only a one-level folder, but to do so, you'll just right-click on the home object and you'll notice that one of the options is to add a folder. Now you can call this whatever you might. You might call it the eSales office folders, the accounts receivable reports, or you might name it by the designer's names. I'm just going to call it My Reports. This is an optional uh, thing to do. You don't have to do it. You could copy reports and keep them in the existing folders that you'll see here. But remember, I want to make some changes to that sales report. Now here's my sales master. And of course, right off the bat, it tells me that to edit the report, I must make a copy of it. So the first thing I'm going to do is right click and make a copy. I'll then copy this into the My Reports folder. And we'll notice here is that copy of that Sales Master. Now I can use the Sales Master multiple times as a base. You'll notice as soon as we have a copy, a report ID is assigned, which is a unique ID that you cannot change. You can change the name of the report. So let me call this my special sales report. And I'll go ahead and apply that and say OK. Now at this point, it's got a report template, which we're going to talk about here shortly, because that's how we actually store the changes. Before doing that, though, I just want to show you that if I make another copy of the Sales Master, because maybe I want to do something else with this one, I'll again copy it into the My Reports. Notice it has the same name coming through, but it's a unique report ID. So I actually do not have to change the names of my reports because they are always uniquely identified by the report ID. Now you'll also notice as soon as I've made that copy, it opens up some additional items on the properties area. We won't talk about this in this class, but if you take the intermediate class, you'll learn all about this. So I want to take this report and just run it. I'll choose the appropriate parameters that we've, we've talked about previously. And let the report generate. Now because this is a copy, I can make changes and make them permanent to this report that I'm designing right now. And here we see our report. Now the first thing I see is that there's a logo on it that might not be what I want to depict. So this is actually not only a logo, but it is a hyperlink. And notice how it hyperlinks into whatever's been designed. Well, I don't want this to happen on my report. So the first thing I want to do is right click on that and remove the hyperlink. Now I might want to replace this with my own logo. So depending on where you have your logo stored, you'll need to access that file. You'll see in our standard MAS90 installation, 
there is an images folder and in that images folder is a logo for our ABC demo company and that's what I'm going to select and place there. I can resize it and now I've replaced that defined logo with one that I want to see on my reports. But that's not all I might want to do. I might want to change columns either by deleting or adding them. So all I have to do is access a cell in the pivot table which will open up the pivot table tools. And from here I've got various options that I can do in that pivot table but I want to look at the field list. Now the field list is showing me what has been designed into that pivot table and from here of course I can change refilters, I can change what's coming in, but I actually want to add a field. So I'd like to see the document number and the document date. And you can see that those columns display in my pivot table. Now I might want to do some formatting here, so I'll go back to the home, use my format painter, and now I've got my logo, my document number, and my document date. Of course I can do much more with this report, but that's all I'm going to do at this point. But every time I run this report, that's what I want to see depicted. So in order to save this to the report, I need to minimize the Excel file and link it back to that report. So I'm going to come to My Special Sales and right click and from here you'll see Create and Link Template. And this is how we're linking up those changes. From there a window will open showing me any open Excel workbook that I have and since I only have the one I'm going to select it, say OK and then I'll say yes. It shows me my template and that's actually what I want my template to be and I'll go ahead and say OK. and the template is generated and successfully linked to the report. That's what I want to see. So now whenever I run that report my changes will be displayed. You can see here I've got my logo as well as the additional columns that I've added. So it's very easy to modify one of those pre-designed reports. You copy it, make your changes, and then create and link the template back.